Hello mobile devs and welcome back to The Rising Guy. Now in this mini series we will explore the importance and the fundamentals of crafting visually appealing user interfaces. So if that's something that you are interested in, please subscribe. Alright so in this video we will be designing this login screen where you have the username and password and you have the sign in button to get started. You also have the create an account button if you don't have an account this will be good to the create to create an account page sorry and there's also a contact admin button if you're unable to gain access into the system uh, so without wasting further time let's get started here with me i have a blank file so what i need to do is create a new project by clicking terminal new terminal to open a terminal in this directory I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'll run the command npx create expo app I'll call it login I'll call it login and hit enter this is going to create a new export project in this current directory so I'll wait for that to finish setting up Once the process is completed, we're going to cd into the login app and we'll run, we'll run the server using the command yarn start. Now we're going to copy the code from this expo server and paste it into the emulator. We're going to copy it and back in the emulator. Alright, so the app is finished building. I'm going to move this to the side and I'll minimize this as well. Alright, I'm going to open the app now. I'll go to the app component and I'll create a file called a component called login.
and i'll create the component here so i'll come here and i'll say create a new file i'll say component since it's authentication i'm going to put inside a directory called authentic auth and i'll create the file here called login.js Now since I have the React Redux snippet tool installed, I'm going to type the command rnfs and this is going to generate a basic uh, React Native Function component. So I'll save it, I'll come here and I'll import it. And we have our new uh, function component coming back to the function component i'm going to uh, style this by giving it a style of container now since a, a size which is equal to the size of the uh, content inside so giving it a, a style of container, I'll be able to set it to be the, the, the width and height of the entire uh, component. So I'll say a flex of one to make it the width and height of the entire component. I'm going to set the width of 100%. We'll use this later. In the app and to align to to set everything in the center of the screen I'm going to give it a uh, justify content center and align item center this is going to center everything in the in the screen right, i'm going to create a couple of states to manage the application so i'll come in and i'll say use state i import use state from react and with the use state snippet which you can do this using the plugin i just mentioned react native redux i'm going to create a state called username Okay, another state called password and I'll create one more state called is loading and we'll use this in the future so I'll set it to false by default. Now inside this uh, component, I'm going to remove this text and I'm going to start uh, designing the layout of the login form. So the first thing I'll do is I'll create a view. I'll give it a style to be equal. I'll give it a style equals uh, styles dot form input wrapper. Uh, for this tutorial, I used an icon from uh, Octi Icon, so I'm just going to copy it from uh, my other screen and I'll paste it here. I'm going to import this, so it's from Octi Icons. I'll say AMIMP. Sorry. I say from at expo icons import this icon now for the input field I'm just going to say text input it's going to import the text input from 
let me import the text input from uh, react native so say text input here and i'm going to start it by giving the style to be styles.input and a placeholder text of a username now to make this look good i'm going to come down here where we have um the style components and i'm going to start the component by saying form input right now i'll give it a width of 90 percent height of 55 pixels and a background color now for the finished product i use a beige color a beige -ish color so i'm just going to copy the code for that color here it is uh, hash f7 f9 ef uh the color is not very visible but you can see it there and i'm going to give it a uh, <coughs> a border width of one and a border color of black i'll give it a bit of border radius to give it a bit of curve around the edges so i'll set it to six and you can see that as an input now it is uh, aligned vertically so i'm going to set the flex direction to roll to get the items to align horizontally and align items to be center align Sorry, align items to be center. Now, to give it a bit of padding here because it's very close to the edge, I'm going to come down here and I'll say padding left of uh, let's say it. I'm going to give it a bit of space here. For the input field itself, I'm going to copy this uh, style. And I'll say for input, I want the width to be ninety percent. This is so that uh, it's not the full width of the of this parent component, so you have space for this uh, icon to to live. I'll set the height to be one hundred percent, so it uh, takes in the full height of the device of the input wrapper. And imagine left property of 10 is to give it a bit of space here so i'm going to save that as you can see we have the username field now to change this cursor color because uh, in react native it comes in with this a uh, bluish color is that blue it comes with this bluish color so to change the color you just come here and you set the cursor color to whichever color you want i'm just going to set it to black as you can see it has changed Let me let me adjust this uh, indentation to make it visible. As you can see, you can enter your username. However, the state is not being managed, so that is why we created this uh, username and set username components up here. So I'm going to come down here and I'll say uh, the value of this simple field should be the username and on change text which is a function that have, that runs each time you press press on this input field we're going to say on change text get the username and you set the value to the username set the username to that username 
and what you're typing is going to update this uh, username uh, state so that you can uh, use it once you're submitting your request to the, to the server all right so we're done with the we're done with the username we're just going to copy this because it's the same thing for the password I'll just come here and I'll change this to password. Alright, so they're a bit, they're a bit ch chucked together. So I'll come down here and I'll give this one a margin bottom. A margin bottom property and I'll set it to 10 to give it a bit of uh, gap between the components. To change this uh, icon, I'm going to replace person with uh, the one I use for the tutorial is shield lock. One thing you notice is that as I'm typing the username, the password is also setting the value to the exact same value as the username. This is because we have the value here set to username, so I'm going to change it to password. And I'll say on, cha on text change, uh, you should set the password. To, you say get the current password and insert the password to that password. Notice that the text is still visible. It, it, is, it has been fixed now, so when you're typing, yeah, it doesn't change this one down here also. Hold on. Hold on, I'm not safe. Let me save it. So they have different values right now. However, when you're typing the password, it is still visible as text. So the way you resolve that is by coming here and saying set sorry secure text entry and you set the value to true. This is going to hide the password whenever you guys typing it by changing into the dots that you see when you're typing the password. Uh, the reason this is also good is because when you're typing the password, um, your keyboard like if you're using android google will automatically trying to auto complete it for you maybe if you're using um an iphone it's going to ask you to enter your biometric credentials to with your fingerprint or your face id to automatically complete that so that's the uh, importance of having this sec secure text entering other than uh, the fact that it hides the password so users cannot see when you're entering it so i believe we're done with the username and password uh, uh, design so we're going to come and we'll design the we'll design the button the sign in button now what i use for this tutorial is i use the package called ripple now ripple is um it's used to design create a ripple effects in a react native component just like to install this package i will just come down here to the terminal and i'll say uh, create a new terminal And so I run the command yarn add react native material repo material repo yes like that and as that is installing I'm going to come here and I'll say I'll import it here I'll say IMP from react native material repo import repo the design for the repo component is uh let me copy it from the finished app so we don't uh spend too much time on the application okay now i'm going to style it by copying also copying the styles for the repo as you can see it has a style of login i'm going to copy it from here and i'll paste it in under here all right let's check if, if the app if the package has finished installing yeah okay that's finished installing so i'm just going to reload the server 
Okay, I'm importing Ripple with small r. So it's Ripple. <coughs> like so. Okay. It's like we have an error building. React Native Material Ripple. I believe it is. Uh... Alright, so I made a mistake and I installed the package in the wrong directory where we are, in we are inside the login app. So it installed it outside here. So I'm going to delete this these files and I'll send, send it into the login app where I will install the package. So I'm just going to reinstall it. I'm not sure you are going to have this error on your end. But if you are following me exactly, you might have the same error. So this is how you resolve it. Once the installation process is completed, we are going to come back to the application and we are going to reload the app by pressing R. So I have to restart the server to be sure. So you hit R and it's going to restart. Reload the application. Okay, so this is the repo button. Um, let me just uh, explain it a bit, a little bit. So you have the repo color, which is uh, the color you want to show on top of the element you are putting the repo on. So it's like a normal component, normal uh, view element with uh, that you have a ripple effect on top. So now the ripple opacity is how much of this color you want to you want it to appear on top of the star component. So as you can see, I set mine to zero point zero five, but you can if you set it to a high value. You set it to a high value when you click on the on the button you're going to see a very a darker color okay now the the, the, the the ripple duration is how long you want the animation to go for so you see the assignment is 0 0.3 seconds which is 300 milliseconds however the higher the value the slower the animation and the ripple center is set to true this is um i'm just going to comment this out so a uh, ripple center is where you want the ripple animation to start from so if i set it to false or i remove it as you can see, when you click, it is where you click that animation is going to start from. So when I click this way, it's going to start from this end. If I click this way, it's going to start from this end. And if I click from the center, you start from the. So the ripple center is uh, where the animation will start from. Now, fade is set to false. Fade is if you want the animation, if you want the ripple effect to fade out, like set the opacity to turn towards zero as the animation is uh, playing through. Uh, the border radius is uh, the just like normal border radius, and then you have a normal star. So as you can see, this is the ripple button. I'm going to remove all the changes. I like this animation because it is subtle and uh, it is uh, predictable. Um, this tutorial is getting uh, too long, so the rest of the process is just a continuation of uh, the previous one. So I'm just going to fast forward this uh, part and we'll make a
all right so as you can see we are done with the ui um now i have your contact and main button and everything um when you click on the button you may notice that the opacity drops by a really large amount like it's really not good so you can fix that by coming to the touchable opacity and adding an active opacity and setting the value so however you like it i'm going to turn mine to 0.7 because i think that that sound that uh, feels really nice especially on the device itself so it goes it is obvious but it's not uh, too obvious that makes it uh, bad um i guess that is it for the login form if you want to see a video of uh, it in action with act with the sign with the sign up page so um please uh, comment down below and i'll do a video on how to create a sign up page for this uh thank you very much for watching to the end and uh, see you next see you next time Gosh.